you've been on this website before, you know I'm a big fan of English sports cars, especially lightweight English sports cars. These are two Lotus Salons. Uh, this is, of course, the Ariel Adam. This is, of course, the uh, Rocket built by Gordon Murray. And, of course, the legendary F1, uh, no longer in production. But there's still a great English sports car being made. Uh, this is the latest one, the Aston Martin DBS. Uh, pretty fantastic car. You know, I think this is a car that you sort of, first you buy it for its looks and you realize just how good it is. I'm astounded at how much technology there is in this car. When I first saw this car, I assumed it was about 4,100 pounds. I just, I don't know why I thought that. It looked kind of heavy, looked big, but it's not. It's all extruded aluminum. It's all bonded together. You've got a carbon fiber drive shaft, carbon fiber door handles, a lot of carbon fiber, not just for look, but actually keep the weight down. This car, as it sits, is 3480, yet it has all the amenities that you would expect of a high-end English sports car. Uh, this particular model has the European seats that are not available in America because, uh, let's just face it, our rear ends are just way too big. We're going to take a little trip around the car now. It's a V12, 362 cubic inch, 6 liter, 510 horsepower. Uh, six-speed. It's a proper gearbox. You know, I, I get a little annoyed that Ferrari in the 599 has given up on the, uh, the, the proper six-speed manual gearbox. This has a transaxle, uh, so consequently, transaxle means you move the, move the transmission and gearbox to the rear of the car. It gives you a little more leg room, and plus you're also able to move the engine a bit further back. So uh, although this is a front-engine car, I would say it's closer to a mid-engine car, much like the SLR Mercedes, uh, but the SLR, of course, is $500,000, and this is about half that price. It's still a lot of money, but you're, you're getting uh, pretty close to equal performance. And plus, it's just a drop-dead, good-looking car. You know, Aston Martins, there's just something about them. When you get in them, you feel like James Bond. Yeah, James Bond. Right now, let's bring in a man who is, uh, knows a lot more about these cars than I do, Julian Jenkins. Julian, how are you? I'm well, Jake. Now, what you? is your official position? You're the... Vice President and General Manager. Vice right, President and General Manager. So if the President was assassinated, you would immediately step forward. I would step into those large shoes. And so you are literally a heartbeat away from being the President of Aston Martin. Okay, uh, take us around this car. I'm sure I've left out a lot of details and a lot of facts. So uh, walk us through it. I, m I must say, driving the car, very impressed about how light feeling it is, at mm. least to me. I'm not a race car driver, I'm just someone who enjoys a car, but I like feeling the road, I like getting a bit of road feel, and I like a, a proper gearbox. I know paddle shifters seem to be the way to go these days. And is that available also with a paddle shifter? No, it's not. Um, we have got Good. Some. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's got a proper gearbox. If you don't know how to drive, then go get some stupid thing with a paddle shifter. If you enjoy being involved with the car, and hearing the exhaust note and, 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 and picking your own gear shift points, uh, this is the way to go. Well, to take you around the car, Jay, uh, I think you've covered a lot of the points, but uh, as you say, it's, uh, it's probably about 145 pounds lighter than the road car. Um, as you can see, particularly in terms of the engine and obviously with the increased horsepower in there, um, it's very much about sort of cooling. We've got the, uh, the splitter vein, the carbon fiber splitter mm. vein in here, little flip on the, on the carbon fiber trunk lid, and of course with the diffuser at the end just uh, gives you that stability at, at speed. And of course, Aston Martin no longer involved with Ford. Ford at one time owned Aston Martin. I think it's safe to say they probably saved it. Uh, so it could move into an independent company. All the engines are built in Cologne, Germany, correct? Uh, that's, that's right, they, they right. were, um, and uh, the, the engines uh, and the cars are all finished. I mean, in. I think people thought, oh, it's some kind of variation of a Ford engine. It's not. It's not at all, no. I no. mean, it was, it's it unique was, it was to dedicated, Aston Martin. It was unique to Aston right. Martin, and there is a signature on each of the, uh, the engines. When I was a kid, there was a guy who used to build all the Aston engines. Tannock well, Merrick? Tannock Merrick, yeah, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I always used, to, always used to be impressed when I'd open an Aston and see his name on the... Uh, well, he did the 5.3, of course, right, for the, right. uh, the DB6, the V8. Right. Um, and this is a 4 cam. It's, it's a four cam overhead. Um, it's a um, 5935 engine, CC right. engine, right. Uh, six liter engine. Um, four valve per cylinder. Four valve, um, right. putting out 510 brake horsepower, as you right. say, and uh, 420 pounds of, of feet. Um, I think the other um, area on the car just to touch is the dynamics, and certainly the suspension on this car is, is pretty impressive. Um, independent um, 
double wishbone at each corner, um, anti-dive on the front, obviously anti-squat, anti-lift on the rear. Um, it's got monotube uh, dampers, um, Bilstein, um, and with that, of course, comes an adaptive damping um, program, which allows us to have uh, a normal road setting and, of course, a track mode as well for the car. Yeah, Aston Martin's done a very good job of branding this automobile. It's, it's kind of a whole Aston Martin lifestyle thing that I, I find kind of cool. You have that special key, we'll show you that. What do they call that? The emotion... The emotional uh, control unit. Emotional control unit. Normally we'd call it a key, but it's an emotional control unit. And as goofy as it's not, you know, it actually works. It actually gets you sort of involved with the car, and there's almost a it's James a sense of Bond theater. sense. You know, there is a sense of theater because when you, you know, the great thing about the F1 McLaren is you sit in the center and you flip up the thing, and it's a bit like a fighter plane. You press the button. I mean, to me, it, it, driving a car like this should be an experience. You know, it's something is like opening a bottle of champagne. You know, you take it out on the weekend, you go for a drive, and and you get wonderfully involved in the car. Uh, let's take a look at the. Well, let's open the bonnet first of all. I'm sorry, the hood for those of you watching in America. I must say I missed the stack of Weber carburetors, but hey, welcome to the things, new things have moved on. But yeah, uh, yeah, they have moved yeah. on. As you see, the engine sits a bit further back than you would normally expect. And this is obviously here for uh, structural integrity. I mean, you've got three of them here. Back in the old days, Ford would call these a Monte Carlo bar, and they used to put it on the, uh, on the Ford Falcons and the Mustangs for rigidity. Uh, but it's a very stiff chassis, doesn't flex at all. As you can see, nice looking motor, V12. Everything is easily accessible. There's not much you have to do under here, really. And then imagine this is what, a, uh, a battery point? It is, it is here, yep. Yeah. As you can see, here's Mick Freeman. And who, uh, and built by this Mick Freeman. So if you have a problem, call Mick Freeman. In fact, I believe they put his home number here. Call him any time of the day or night, and Mick will fix your car for you. Not a problem. All part of the service. And you have a proper hood scoops and yeah, it's certainly and, yeah. and very functional. It's good. It's very light. This is carbon fiber. As it's well, carbon right? fiber, and what's interesting is you don't see the weave through it as well. Um, right. Part of a, um, a process which uh, which is unique to Aston Martin. Okay. Actually, gives you that class A finish as well. As you can see, this one has got the uh, lightweight carbon fiber seats. You can see a lot of the carbon fiber um, touches in, inside. This is a car very much focused around the, uh, the, the driver, as you can see. And little touches as well that come in from the racing program. You've got here a double split stitch line on the, on the steering wheel. Just gives you that center point. Very tactile in terms of the, uh, the gear shift. First for Aston Martin, I think, are carbon fiber brakes. That's right, cross-drilled um, carbon right. fiber, carbon I think ceramic those brakes. 15.7 inches. Six on yeah. the front, four on the back, four. and actually a weight saving overall of about 25 to uh, to 30 um, pounds uh, on the car, other, and, and that, exactly. uh, that adds up to the 140. And of course, rate. like most uh, cars of this category, you just have a massive, massive trunk. There you go. You want to carry three oranges, maybe three oranges and an apple. You've got all kinds of room in here. Actually, you could probably get a set of golf clubs in there. Right? You certainly get a set of golf clubs yeah. and uh, a weekend luggage. But you know something, if you're playing golf, buy something else, okay? Very nice to drive, very tractable. And geez, it, it, I was amazed how easy it was to slide it and do donuts with it. And it's always fun sliding and doing donuts with somebody else's car. But, uh, well, the dynamic uh, stability control on the car has, uh, has three settings, and right. certainly one of those will Well, you've got uh, a race setting, everything. you can turn it off, and then you've got a, a proper road uh, a setting. A road setting, correct. Yep. And of course, you have all the usual things that you have in a car this class, the little thing that beeps when you back up if there's a pedestrian or something. Um, and it's got all the safety features. You can hit people on the front end, and they get up laughing. Well, let's take a variety. Here's our emotion unit. It's a key. Stick that in there, put the clutch in, hold it down. Sounds good. As you can see, it's beautifully appointed inside. You have your emotion unit, which makes me laugh. You've got your navigation screen, which I like, as I mentioned before, which disappears into the dashboard. I hate those ones that you constantly have to look at it because I find it very distracting. Nicely laid out, proper analog gauges. Thank you for just having a regular clock. I hate these stupid digital, stop blinking in my face. The numbers seem a little small, but that might be my 58-year-old eyes. The speed comes up uh, digitally as well. Um, a lot of carbon fiber. I love this gloss black finish. A lot of polished aluminum. Um, as nice as the uh, English clubhouse look is with the wood, it doesn't really suit this type of car. This is truly a modern, modern Aston Martin. And you've got enough vintage uh, in the terms of the proper gearbox 
Now, although this shift lever is unusually big, I don't quite quite get that, but that's all right. I tend to like a ball at the end of my shift lever, but I'm old school. Steering wheel is just about the right size, and it makes terrific noises when you put your foot in it. You always find yourself looking for blowfield or somebody in the rear view mirror when you drive this thing. You know, all Aston should come with a tape of because you kind of get into that James Bond thing while you're driving. On your stability control, you have three settings, as, as uh, Julian said. You've got your normal driving setting, you've got your track mode, and of course, then you can turn it off completely. Uh, the track mode sort of makes me laugh. It doesn't seem like a track car. But as I said, this is a GT car masquerading as a sports car. Um, it was a true sports car. It wouldn't have all these luxuries and amenities to it. But it's a wonderful car for covering uh, great distances. You know, if you want to drive LA to Vegas, you want to drive up to Yosemite, you want to drive to San Francisco, boy, it's not a nice requirement. It's quick, it's fast, it handles, and it's reasonably lightweight. That's what impresses me the most about the car, is the reasonably lightweight. I just assume, uh, you know, being English and sort of old school, it would be a lot heavier than it is, much like a bit. No, this is, uh, you've got a thousand pounds less weight in this than you do in a comparable Bentley. Very, very impressive car. No cowl shake. You know, when you throw it hard in the corners, it does you don't see the front end bouncing at all. Very stiff. Carbon fiber brakes are wonderful. You know, the problem with carbon fiber brakes for years, they just couldn't get them hot enough to really work properly on the street. That was McLaren's problem when they developed their car 15 years ago. But those problems have been taken care of. These are virtually fade-free. There's no way you could fade these brakes, especially on the street. I would say this car, dimension-wise, is about the size of a Mustang, but a lot more power and a lot more handling. And your acceleration holds very strong. And we've got to pull over and wait for our chase car. That exhaust note is intoxicating. You know, much like the uh, Corvette, uh, Z06, you've got that solenoid in the exhaust that uh, once you get above a certain RPM, it opens up and lets it f uh, flow a little more freely. So you, so you can be quiet around town and pulling in the driveways. And when you put your foot in it, you know, you get that nice, uh, nice exhaust. 510 horsepower is not the end of the world. In fact, it's not even the most horsepower in this class. But it's pretty good. And combined with the lightweight and the handling, uh, makes it a very, very desirable car. And don't let your kid borrow this car. Okay, it'd be a huge, huge mistake.